This bike is 25 years old. Okay, it's not actually 25 years old, it's brand spanking new, but the Swiss Cross model was first introduced by Tom Ritchie way back in 1994. And for 2019, it celebrates its 25th birthday with a limited edition run and a few key updates to bring it into the 21st century. Now, older viewers watching this will know who Tom Ritchie is, but if you don't know who he is, if you've not heard of him, you're too young, then go and do a quick Google search and find out all about him. Bit of a legend, bit of a frame building legend in the mountain bike world, and he's got a great moustache, so go and check out his backstory. But let's crack on with this review. The first place to start is naturally the frame and we have a very skinny steel tube frame set which looks traditional compared to modern carbon and aluminium bikes. It's made using the company's own Logic triple butted tubing. Triple butting saves a bit of weight and refines the ride quality and it's very neatly welded together. Some of the neatest welding I've seen on any steel bike I've ever tested. Got a nice external seat clamp for an external bottom bracket as well and all the cables and hoses are externally routed. Now I know some of you might prefer internal cable routing, but personally, the maintenance and simplicity of an external cable routing wins me over every time. And I don't think it looks too bad on this bike at all. Up front is a full carbon fork with, as you can tell, a very skinny non-tapered steer tube. Now most carbon alloy bikes use a oversized tapered head tube for extra stiffness and a bit of lower weight. But Richie says that the non-tapered carbon steer gives the weight and the stiffness and the strength they need and it also complements the rest of the bike. It looks in proportion and it looks right for this frame. Now the other key detail on this bike are the disc brakes and I'll just spin the bike around so I can show you. To bring the bike into the modern era, it's now running 12 mm through axles, front and rear, with flat mount disc brakes. They've made these really beautiful forged dropouts for the flat mount adapter to fit to the frame. It's really nicely done. A nice clean cable routing on the chain state and up the down tube. And on the fork, it's external routing as well, using the regular flat mount adapter there from Shimano. So it's a lovely, lovely looking bike, but it's a couple of downers I need to point out. It's not as versatile, not as adaptable as a modern gravel and adventure bike. For example, you only have two bottle case mounts, there's not a third one on a down tube. And when it's raining like it is now, there are no mudguard mounts. So it's not a bike you can see being used as a commuting bike or a winter training bike with a set of slick tires and mudguards, but it is very much a purebred, thoroughbred CX racing bike that you've been given the option to fit wild tires if you want to do a bit more than just racing CX on a Sunday. There's another detail I need to point out as well. While yes, you can fit a 40 mil tire, which is good. That's my preferred size here in the UK. Clearance is very tight around the carbon fork and it's a similar story at the back as well. So yes, you can fit a 40 mil tire, but there's not much space around the tires at all. So if you need to fit a knobby tire for winter mud plugging here in the UK, you don't have much clearance, so you probably have to go down a size, give you that clearance you need when you're riding in the mud. And it does limit the bike a little bit, really. It's a little bit compromised if you are looking for a more versatile, uh, capable gravel adventure bike. But it's not trying to be that. It is a purebred CX racer that's just been given a bit of extra tire clearance, so times when you want a bit more comfort, a bit more capability to go a bit further in your local CX race. Okay, that's enough of the first look. Let's go for a ride and see how it performs. The one thing that everybody knows about steel bikes is how smooth they are. Despite advances in material technology from like carbon, aluminium, titanium, steel, when done properly, offers a really smooth ride quality. And that much is true with a Swiss Cross. The heritage and history and expertise from Tom Ritchie shine through in the way this bike deals with rough tracks and pothole country lanes and bumps and roots and rocks. It's just sublime, really. It's just one of the nicest riding bikes I've ridden in a long time. It's just a lovely riding bike got great speed, got pretty low weight for a steel bike well. The weight penalty over a carbon or alloy bike isn't as great as you'd imagine. Uh, picks up speed well, it's got a nice amount of stiffness, transfers power well. It's very direct steering despite that non-tapered steerer tube. The handling definitely errs on the side of favouring cyclocross racers. 
Got that agility, that nimbleness you want for weaving around a tight cyclocross course. But he made a few changes to geometry, the lower bottom brackets and stack and reach adjustments. That mean when you're on a longer distance gravel ride like I am today, you've got a nice amount of stability and it's quite short footed when you're barreling along high speed gravel tracks and you're not throwing it around a tight twisted course. So it's pretty versatile in that way that you can use it for a cyclocross race on a Sunday, but yet use it on a longer gravel adventure ride um, during the week or on a Saturday when you're not cyclocross racing. probably easy to get wrapped up in the heritage and history of Tom Ritchie, especially the older viewers watching this. But if you disregard that and ignore the name of the down tube, it's just a superbly put together frame and fork that rides beautifully. The ride quality is just first class. One of the nicest steel bikes I've ridden. Hey, scrap that. One of the nicest bikes I've ridden, regardless of the frame material. The quality is just first class. So whether you're riding slightly cross on a Sunday or you want a bit more of a capable bike for long weekend rides exploring gravel tracks like I am today then a Swiss Cross is a pretty decent choice. So you manage to retain the spirit of the cross bike that the bike is but just made it a bit more accessible to people who aren't going to race cross every Sunday. However I do have reservations about the limited tyre clearance and the lack of versatility compared to more modern contemporary gravel and adventure bikes. So who is the Ritchie Swiss Cross aimed at? Who should buy it? Is it the bike for you this year, 2019? Well, that's a tricky one, to be honest. The case, the argument for this bike 25 years ago, probably a lot easier to make than it is in today's cycling market, when there are so many brands producing so many good bikes. If you want a classic steel cyclocross bike that has a clearance for slightly wider tires for those days when you don't want to go cross racing, and you want to explore some gravel tracks in your local surrounding area, then this could be a bike for you. It's not too badly priced. You can only buy a frame set, so you need to build it up yourself. You might have a box of parts lying around in the garage on which you could build it up. And if you are an older viewer and you remember Tom Ritchie from back in the day, then that will definitely appeal to you. It has a history, the heritage, and you can bet this bike will still look good in 25 years time, as good as it does today. If, however, you are looking for a gravel adventure bike, you probably want a bit more versatility, a bit more capability than this bike offers in terms of tire clearance, mud guard mounts, extra mounts of bottles and, and so on. And a geometry that's a little bit better suited to off-road uh, focused riding than the cross racing this bike is really designed for. But one thing is for sure, I absolutely loved riding this bike. It's got a fantastic ride quality it's sublimely smooth on all my local rough roads and gravel tracks. It looks wonderful and I'm old enough to remember just about when Tom Ritchie was doing this for the very first time and I grew up mountain biking and Tom Ritchie was one of the forefathers of mountain biking so that does speak to me a lot but it might not speak to you and it might not mean anything to you in which case this bike is probably not as compelling um, a buying decision for you as it might be for someone my, like myself. So that's a quick first ride review impressions on the Ritchie Swiss Cross. There'll be a much more detailed written review on the Row CC website. So make sure you go and check that out. We put out reviews twice weekly, every Wednesday and Sunday. So make sure you check onto our website for a review of the bike and other road bikes and gravel bikes that we're testing all the time here on Row CC. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoy watching it. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It means a lot to us. Got any questions, put them in the comment section below and I'll see you down there to have a bit of debate about this bike and whether you like it or not. And I'll see you all again next time. Right, I'm off for a spin before it goes back to Richie.